In my video on REST API concepts and examples, I showed you how to get the latitude and longitude for any location using the Google Maps API, and then pass those coordinates to the Instagram API to receive pictures taken at that location. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you quickly through building that functionality into a simple web application. So here's what we'll be building. We have a page with a single input field where you can enter a location, say Disneyland, California. And then we click submit and the page reloads and a list of Instagram images from Disneyland are displayed. Cool stuff. So let's dive into the code and see how this is put together. I'll be doing this in a single PHP file, which will contain all of our application logic as well as our view. And you can find a link to the finished PHP file in the description below. Of course, in a real world application, you're gonna be using a framework along with its controllers and templates. So instead of one file, you'd have dozens, but for simplicity, bear with me on this single file nonsense. Also, I'll be doing this in PHP, but there's no reason why you couldn't do it in Python or Ruby or pure JavaScript or any programming language that's capable of making HTTP requests. So let's get to it. For starters, let's create the PHP file. And since everything needs a name, we'll call it geogram.php. Opening it up, let's add an opening and closing PHP tag to the top of the file, which is where we will add our application logic. And we'll get back to that in just a minute. Below that, let's put a very basic HTML5 boilerplate. And as you can see, I've only added a title of geogram to the head section, and I've left the rest of the HTML body blank. Now, if we load this page up in the browser, in its current state, you can see it's blank. Of course, to load a PHP file on your browser, you're gonna need to be running a web server of some sort on your machine. In this case, I'm running Apache, and I'm serving this file at localhost slash geogram.php. Going back to the code, now let's add our form markup to the HTML body. As a quick refresh for those like me who haven't worked with raw HTML forms in a while, the form's action attribute tells the browser where to submit the form. However, if you leave it blank, then it will submit the form to the address of the current page, which is what we want in this case since our application is only this one PHP file. Next, we'll set our input tag, making sure the type attribute is set to text, and we'll also add a name attribute to the input and we'll set its value as location. Finally, we'll add our button. Since the button is inside of the form, giving it a type attribute of submit, we'll submit the form when the button is clicked. Of course, if you need the button to be outside of the form, you could always use JavaScript to submit the form as well. So let's go ahead and reload the page in our browser and you can see our location input form and submit button. And if we type test and click submit, you can see that up in the URL bar, the form was submitted to the same location, localhost slash geogram.php, and we see that the query parameter location has been added. Remember that was the name that we gave our input tag in our HTML markup. And of course, its value is test. Okay, with that painful HTML form refresher out of the way, let's write our application logic by, and we'll first move this HTML down out of the way to keep our mind focused on PHP for a minute. First thing we need to do is grab the location parameter that's sent to the server from the web browser. Now, when a PHP file is initialized by a web server, a whole bunch of information about the HTTP request is loaded into special PHP variables. Query parameters contained as part of a Git request are put in the Git array. So in this case, the location value entered in the form will be contained in the location key in the Git array. And because we only wanna make our API request, if a location has been submitted, we'll wrap our application logic in a conditional to check whether the git location key is set. And if not, then we'll skip over all of our PHP and simply load the HTML form that we've already added below. So now comes the fun part. Let's send that location over to the Google Maps API to get its geo coordinates. Now, again, if this were a real application, you'd probably wanna use some kind of library to make these API requests. But since we're making a simple Git request to a REST API, we'll just use PHP's file get contents function. I showed you in my REST API video that the Google Maps API can be accessed at maps.googleapis.com slash maps slash API slash geocode slash JSON. And then you set what you want to search for under the address parameter. So we'll set our maps URL variable equal to that URL string, and then we'll concatenate our location variable the get location after the equal sign. Finally, we'll pass the maps URL variable to the file get contents function and capture the return into our maps JSON variable. But let's load that up into the browser and see what the response looks like. Before we look at the response though, watch what happens when I add a space to the URL. The Google Maps API still returns a valid response. However, see how the space was replaced automatically with percent %20. That's because an HTTP URL containing spaces is invalid. What your browser is doing automatically is URL encoding those invalid characters. However, when programming something, you need to do this yourself. So let's go back to the code real quick and we'll wrap our location variable in the URL encode function. So now let's go back to that response again in the browser. And you see that what's returned is JSON data. And before we can work with this response from the Google Maps API, we need to convert that JSON into a PHP array. To do this, we'll pass the JSON response we received from the file get contents to PHP's JSON decode function. And we'll set the second parameter to true so that the JSON is decoded into an array as opposed to an object. And we'll capture this return into a variable simply called maps array. 
Okay, back to getting our data from the Google Maps API. Looking one more time at the JSON response in the browser, we can see that the data we're interested in is contained under the lat and lang values all the way down here. Now, because the PHP array will maintain the same structure as the original JSON response, we'll traverse the maps array variable to get those values. So working backwards, we see that the data that we want is under the key location and then the key geometry and then an array value, which will have a numeric key of zero since it's the first member of the array. And finally, the key results. Putting it together in our PHP, our lat will be contained under the maps array, results, zero, geometry, location, lat. And our longitude will be under maps array, results, zero, geometry, location, LNG. So to make things easier to read going forward, let's pull each of those values into a lat and lang variable. Now that we have our coordinates, let's pass them to Instagram. Now, if you recall in my REST API video, I showed you that you can search Instagram by location using the following API endpoint, api.instagram.com slash v1 slash media slash search with the following parameters, lat, lang, and client ID. Note that we're using the parameter client ID rather than an access token, but you can use either, it's totally up to you. So we'll go ahead and set our Instagram URL as api.instagram.com slash v1 slash media search, and then we'll set the lat equal to the lat variable we captured from Google Maps and the lang variable equal to the lang variable we got from Google Maps. And then this will be our client ID. Note I'm gonna delete this client before I post the video. So you're gonna to have to create your own in the Instagram developer dashboard. For your reference, I cover how to do this at the beginning of my video on generating Instagram access tokens. Okay, so just like the Google Maps API, we'll pass this Instagram URL variable to the file get contents function and get back JSON data. Again, we want to decode the JSON data into a PHP array and we'll name the variable that captures it Instagram array. So opening up the Instagram URL in the browser, we can see that the response contains a key called images with URLs to different image sizes. We'll be using the low resolution image in our application. So working backwards, we see that the URL value we want is under URL, low resolution, images, an array key, and finally data. Notice that when we collapse the array key for that image, we see another image entry below it. In fact, this API request returned 20 separate Instagram posts, all contained as members of the data array. So to pull the low resolution URLs from each of the 20 Instagram posts, we won't wanna write out 20 separate lines of code. Instead, we'll run the Instagram array data through a loop since the data that we want, the low resolution URL, is in the same place in every Instagram post. And since we wanna display these images in our view, let's head back down to the HTML markup, set a break, and then an opening and closing pair of PHP tags within which we'll put our for each loop. Written in PHP, it looks like this, for each Instagram array data as image. What this does is that as the for each loop is going through the list of Instagram posts, it sets the image variable equal to a single Instagram post so that way we can process it further. Of course, this is only temporary as that variable is replaced by the next Instagram post on the subsequent loop. And since there's 20 Instagram posts contained in our array, everything that we program inside this for each loop will be executed 20 times, once for each Instagram post. So what we'll do inside of the for each loop is echo an HTML image tag, and we'll set the image source equal to the value of image, and then the key low resolution, and finally the key URL. And this will echo out 20 image tags in total, one for each of the Instagram posts. One last thing we need to add is a conditional wrapper around the for each loop since we don't want to attempt to echo any images unless we've successfully received them from the Instagram API. Otherwise we'll get errors when loading the page. So let's go ahead and refresh our geogram.php page in the browser and once again enter Disneyland California, click submit and boom, it works. So there you have it. That wasn't too difficult, right? Of course, if you have any experience programming, you'll notice that there's tons of stuff missing, things like styling or caching, error handling, and even making the requests over Ajax would really enhance the application. So be sure to subscribe as I'll be going over some of those concepts in future videos and adding them to this little geogram application. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments or on Twitter at Ben Beerstrom. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.